When you walk through the Selig house, you slowly begin to piece together a story. A story about a father, a mother, and their twin children, Morgan, an empath, and Lex, who disappeared. Each room in the house offers more to the story, from the dining room where Lex vanished, to the landing where the grandfather collected a lifetime of research. And as you walk down the hallway, past everyone's bedrooms, the walls bend and change until you arrive at one final door. Who is the teen girl? Welcome to Meow Wolf Fan 1, Meow Wolf's first number one fan. Today, we're going to look at three theories on what's going on with the mysterious teen girl room. Compared to the other phenomena at the House of Eternal Return, this room is almost banal. Other than being somewhat eccentric, it's really just a bedroom, except that it shouldn't be there. Some people don't notice this room is out of place at all, and that brings us to theory number one, that the teen girl room belongs to Morgan Pastor. This theory is wrong. I mean, okay, there's no canonical answer about what exactly this room is, so I guess anything is technically possible, but no, this isn't Morgan's room. First of all, Morgan is 10 years old per the Charter website. You might be able to convince me that this room belongs to a preteen, but a 10-year-old? Does this look like a 10-year-old's room? Plus, there's ample evidence that Lex and Morgan share the bedroom down the hall. Morgan's plant journal is in the bedroom, there's a plant hanging in the window, and Jean's dream journal, which probably belongs to Morgan now because she was so close with Jean. Yes, Lex definitely has a stronger presence in that room, but remember that Morgan also has her secret room under the stairs. Also, there's a bunk bed, and neither bunk is made, so it seems likely that two kids live in this room. On to theory two, which is going to be confusing in true Meow Wolfian form. The teen girl's room is Morgan's room, but in the future. Some have suggested that this room is a dimension offering a view of the future, a surprisingly depressing future. Because in this future, Morgan is now an only child after the family fails to bring Lex back from fog space. If you don't know what these words mean, be sure to check out our Meow Wolf vocabulary video to learn some basic keywords to help you navigate the Meow Wolf narrative. Anyway, as I was saying, Lex is gone. Morgan has the room to herself. No more bunk bed. Typical, if not extra trashy, teen aesthetic. But there's something else here. Something intentionally unsettling about this room. The weird media playing on the TV, the harsh colors. Whoever lives here has an edge to them if they're not outright disturbed. Something is wrong with this teen girl. Something beyond all the things wrong with normal teens. And this unease is so unquantifiable that maybe it shouldn't even count. Maybe it's just because it's a room that shouldn't exist in the house. And that paranoid feeling is seeping into an otherwise non-scary room. But I personally think it's worth mentioning. And the theory that this room belongs to a future Morgan, scarred and cynical from the loss of her twin brother, helps make sense of the general feeling of anxiety in this room. And by now, I'm sure you're all screaming at your screen, what about boy girl? Yes, it's impossible to ignore the central figure of this room, a fictional pop star called Boy Girl. This name is all over the room, along with photos that show that this character happens to be a creepy, faceless celebrity in the same vein as Lady Gaga or Sia. And the fact that the words boy girl are literally plastered in every corner of the room makes it impossible to ignore questions of gender and sexuality. I mean, I'm calling it the teen girl room right now, and I'm not the only one. Probably because of the prominence of pink, the Barbie dolls, and the fact that celebrity obsession is generally associated with girls over boys. But obviously, the room itself wants to call these assumptions into question. Is it a girl's room? Is your analysis of this room based on antiquated gender assumptions? Is it really Morgan's room? Some proponents of this theory argue that Boy Girl actually proves it's Morgan. After losing Lex, Morgan now lives in the place of two twins. She is the Boy Girl now. And maybe it's deeper than a simple sense of duty to live both as herself and in place of Lex. Maybe when Lex blipped out of this universe and his corporeal form, he channeled his anomaly powers into Morgan. Or maybe, lacking a way back to our universe otherwise, Morgan somehow absorbed him. Morgan is the dominant character. She is still herself, but her brother also lives inside her. And puberty is a volatile and confusing time under the best circumstances. Imagine the identity confusion of becoming sexually aware while your brother is also going through that and you absorbed your brother, so it's double puberty. 
anyway. That could explain the overpowering, typically feminine motifs despite the label boy girl. She is a boy girl, but the girl identity is more dominant since the boy identity is just renting a room in her soul. Or maybe Morgan simply grows up to be genderqueer and this room just exists to foreshadow the tragic ending that Lex could not be saved and Morgan is an only child. But that just seems too simple for Meow Wolf. Oh, and if you're feeling sad because it looks like the ending to this entire building full of narrative is that the child dies, I got you covered. Remember, we're in a multiverse, which means there are parallel universes made of possible futures. Of course there's a universe where they can't save Lex. We know that's a possibility. We hope there's a future where they succeed. This room is a reminder of the stakes. The final theory is my own. The teen girl room belongs to Lucius. Hear me out. To my mind, this hallway is what disproves the room belonging to Morgan even in the future because the layout already has the twins' room where it goes in the house. This is an extra room. If it was a glimpse into the future, I don't think Meow Wolf would lead you further down the hall. I'd think they'd stick another portal in the twins' room. But then you get to the hall. It's this weird extra room that's kind of grafted on to the otherwise orderly house. Doesn't that sound like someone we know? Because Lucius isn't a part of this nuclear family. He does doesn't have his own space in the house, his place is on the couch. And you can find his possessions strewn about that area, and his tapes playing on the TV. Hey, old VHS tapes playing on an old TV, where else do we see that? And why would the teen girl even have a VHS player? In this world of dimensions, being born of personalities, it makes sense that Lucius could birth a representation of the room he lacks. Well, that's all well and good, you say, but what about the room itself? Because sure, Lucius is gay, but this room is a lot. The most compelling argument, to me, is that this room is not real. It's a parody of a teen girl room. Have you ever seen a real room that looked like this? There's none of the notes or personal effects found in the rest of the house. There's no mess. It doesn't look lived in. This is an idealized room. Is this what Lucius wishes his teen room was? Did he used to share a room with Piper? We know that Lucius is gay. Is he genderqueer? I propose that this room is a manifestation of Lucius desiring a place for himself. With nothing left, he's nostalgic for his teenhood, which explains the out-of-date 80s style. Perhaps Lucius is bitter that his teenhood, a time when one usually gets to explore their sexual and gender identity, was taken away. He never got the chance to obsess over a celebrity or express his identity. He was sick and tired that entire time. I think this is Lucius's guess at teenhood. And he got a lot of things wrong. It is detailed, but not in a lifelike way. It's a dream. Now, I originally came to this conclusion after noting that every family member has a room except Lucius, but that's not actually true. Emerson doesn't have a room either, but there's nothing in this room that leads me to think any aspect of it has anything to do with Emerson. Emerson's area is the room at the top of the stairs, but I don't think he sleeps there. And we know that Lucius sleeps on the couch, so maybe the fact that Lucius doesn't have a private space doesn't actually hold a lot of weight here, especially since you can go to Lucius's trailer, but not any private space of Emerson's. On that note, Meow Wolf, give Emerson a room! I love him. So maybe the teen room belongs to Lucius, maybe it belongs to a Morgan Lex hybrid, and maybe it's something else. We may never know. I mean, I'm gonna do my due diligence and ask the charter chat box, of course, but in the meantime, I have one more teen girl room mystery for you. This poster of the game Dance Dance Revolution Extreme 2 for the PlayStation. Obviously, it features girl boy, the fictional pop star, and there are matching curtains in the room, but a friend specifically pointed out DDR Extreme 2 wasn't a PlayStation 1 game. It was only released on the PS2. Marty, I'm scared. All right, Charter, what do you know about this room? Huh? The chat is empty? Broken? My name is Theseus. The... I am the historian what? of this house. If you have questions, I can answer them. Mm, this man's trying to take my job. Wait a minute. Each room relates back what? to someone in the house. Hey. Hey. And it is this area of the house hey, no, where the veil no. grows thinner. Hey, what? Between the world what? of the house. What the, what the, but. And the world of the anomaly. The teen room is gone. Fuck. <laughs>